Honorable Chairman of the Legislative Council, Honorable Speaker of the Legislative Assembly, Honorable Chief Minister, Members of the Council of Ministers, Members of the Legislative Council and Legislative Assembly, and the hard-working and the peace-loving people of Telangana. As stated by the Praja Kavi, Bhatma Vibhushan, late Sri Kaloji Narayana Rao Garu, Adhikara Munnadani, Haddu, Paddu Leka, Aniyaya Margala, Narjimbu Bhunina, Achivache, Rojalanda Mainai, Achivache, Rojalanda Mainai. I stand before you today with gratitude for the trust and confidence bestowed upon us by the people of Telangana. The recent elections marked a decisive moment a collective call for change and equitable progress. The message was clear and resonant. The people of Telangana earned for freedom, democracy and governance that reflected their aspirations. I extend my appreciation for the collective wisdom of the people whose verdict became the cornerstone for liberal, civil rights and democratic rule. The re-christened Jyoti Phule Praja Bhavan is now open for the public to access and ventilate their grievances. The Telangana government is now by the people and for the people. I commend Chief Minister Sri Anumulla Revandredi for articulating the government's commitment to serve as the people's servants in a true democracy. The Prajavani program, the government's first step in this direction, embodies the essence of people's governance, providing a platform for citizens to express their concern and concerns and seek redressal. Telangana was born out of the aspirations of four crore people and the sacrifices of the youth and the relentless struggles of students. Our governance is rooted in the responsibility to honor those sacrifices and our aim is to govern in alignment with the desires of civil society. The government expresses gratitude to all those parties and leaders who played a pivotal role in the creation of Telangana, especially acknowledging the efforts of the then UPA government and the Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh. This government conveys that it is indebted to Mrs. Sonia Gandhi for her instrumental role in this historic process. As promised during the elections, the government is committed to realizing the six guarantees for the welfare and development of our people. The two guarantees have already been implemented. Showcasing the government's dedication. I am happy that more than 15 crore trips have already been utilized by our women through the free TSRTC bus transportation services under the Mahalakshmi scheme implemented as part of six guarantees. The government has conducted the Praja Palana program in a successful manner. Grama and ward sabas were conducted in every Gram Panjayat and every municipality respectively in a peaceful and democratic manner. We have received over 
were 1.28 crore applications and surely all six guarantees will be implemented in a time bound manner i am ha happy to announce that my government will implement two more guarantees very soon under the mahalakshmi scheme the lpg cylinders will be supplied to eligible families for rupees 500 only similarly under the krihajodi scheme 200 units of free domestic power will be given to every eligible household my government pledges to implement the guarantees including the mahalakshmi scheme raitu barosa gruha jayodi indrama houses yuva vikasam and cheyuta the promises made will be fulfilled and we stand committed to the declarations for the farmers youth scst communities bc and minority communities our vision for telangana encompasses various sectors from irrigation projects like palamuru rangareddy to education with fulfilling up to about 2 lakh jobs by our newly constructed tspsc the government is actively addressing land related issues through the newly formed dharani committee hyderabad our capital is not only the seat of governance but also a source of revenue for the welfare and development of our state we aim to revive its past glory and continue decentralizing development across the state our gover government is committed to restoring financial discipline and transparency the white paper on financial re finance released during the last session of the assembly has laid bare the incompetent and reckless manner in which the previous government has managed public finance the people of telangana have handed over a rich state to the previous government and after 10 years they have handed over a debt ridden state to us the immediate challenge is to improve the state's financial situ situation without burdening the people the budget gives us an opportunity to start the path of restoration responsibility and accountability in the management of public finance the rebuilding process extends to institutions that have suffered in the last decade we pledge to restore the core values of the legislature and executive ensuring transparency accessibility and adherence to the constitutional principles all the institutions that are critical to the growth and development of the state like tspsc and tshrc state information commission universities etc will be given the space to function in a responsible manner agriculture has been backbone of telangana provided providing sustenance to a significant portion of our population the toil of our farmers has played a pivotal role in shaping the economic landscape of our state recognizing vital role agri agriculture plays in our so socio economic fabric and my government is unwavering in its commitment to the welfare of our farmers we understand the challenges they face from climate change to market functions fluctuations and flex to implement robust policies that ensure their prosperity though initiatives like through initiatives like raitu barosa and crop loan waiver we aim to we empower our farming community with crop diversification programs horticulture promotion quality seeds and advanced agriculture practices our vision is not only to enhance agriculture productivity but also to create a sustainable and thriving environment for our farmers industries and service sectors are vital for the growth of economy they also contribute significantly to creating new jobs it is seen that the state of telangana has massive potential for propelling industrial and service sector growth however the potential has only been partially utilized my government intends to bring a completely new paradigm to supporting the two vital sectors the government intends to introduce a new policy that will be based on a thorough study of existing ground realities feedback from stakeholders and taking consensus from of global best practices telangana will strive to become a role model state where new and existing investors face no hurdles not only at the time of entry but also during their continuing operations and future expansions my government will provide 
high quality infrastructure and will come up with new systems to maintain the infrastructure. My government will also try to take advanced action to create a skilled workforce from amongst the local youth who can benefit from gainful employment in these sectors. The government also intends to balance regional disparities which are starkly noticeable in Telangana. Data shows that many industrial units in Telangana fall under the categories of micro, small and medium enterprises or MSMEs. The challenges and requirements of MSMEs are quite different from those of large industries. My government will announce a new MSME policy for helping them with improved technology, the ability to recruit skilled manpower, financing market access and the prevention of industrial sickness. An exclusive institutional mechanism will be set up by the handhold MSME, MSMEs and support their grievances. The government will also take specific measures to encourage entrepreneurship and risk taking in marginalized communities including the SC, ST, BCs, minorities, women, persons with disabilities with they, when they choose to pursue entrepreneurial activities. My government will provide special emphasis to sectors that have been underutilized as compared to their potential like leather, potential like leather and footwear, gems and jewelry, chemicals and plastic, engineering goods, FMCG products, high value food processing, electric mobility and storage and ensure that the dedicated industrial parks and the supporting ecosystems are created for each. We will continue to support champion sectors like IIT and pharma. My government is proposing to set up 10 to 12 pharma village clusters of extents between 1,000 to 3,000 acres, which will be away from habitations and also self-contained with facilities for effluent treatment, testing labs, logistic infrastructure, and social infrastructure for housing, education, and healthcare. Even though the new government is only a few weeks old, the Honorable Chief Minister and Honorable Minister for Industries and Commerce and IT, IT and ENC successfully led a delegation to the World Economic Forum annual meeting at Davos, Switzerland and got a very positive response from industry leaders. Over 40,000 crores is new investment were announced addresses on the government's vision for healthcare and agriculture to the esteemed delegates during the conference. MOUs were signed in the areas of renewable energy, life sciences, man ma manufacturing, data structuring, data, cent data centers, food processing, IT, etc. Digital adoption is happening at a rapid pace in our society today. Telangana state not only needs to fully benefit from digital opportunities, but also become a leader in the country for new technologies. One of the most significant forthcoming initiatives of my government would be to introduce the internet as the basic right. The focus will not just be, just to, just be to create digital infrastructure, but also to make it accessible and affordable to all sections of society. My government will implement a very thorough digital literacy program to ensure that every household regardless of its economic status or location, will be able to benefit from the rapid digital adoption of opportunities that are arising. My government is determined to harness the power of new technology, particularly the artificial intelligence. We will position Hyderabad and Telangana as the AI capital of the country by inviting the top global and national technology comp companies to set up their AI centers. We will set up a dedicated AI city in 50 to 100 acres. With an inclusive approach and targeted planning and execution, I am confident that my government will be able to fully unlock the potential 
that industries and services sectors offer to the people of Telangana. And I am also confident that the initial results will be visible within few months. My government has set skill training and vocational education as top priority. The address to address skill gaps and meet the requirements of industry for 4.0, my government is transferring all government IITs in the state into advanced technology centers and an estimated project cost of about rupees 2,000 crores. These centers will offer NCVT approved long-term and short-term courses in high demand trades and will benefit nearly 1 lakh youth of Telangana. Telangana has been meeting its energy needs predominantly through coal. In order to optimize the cost of power, meet the demand profile of the state and increase the energy share of, from clean energy, the Telangana government will come up with a comprehensive energy policy to promote all types of green energy. That is solar, wind, hybrid, solar and wind and we all store and well as well as storage, pumped or battery to meet peak requirement. The government aims to improve the share of green energy significantly and reduce carbon emission by 2030. As we gather here to discuss the future trajectory of our beloved state, it is imperative to highlight the immense tourism potential that Telangana possesses. Our state nestled the heart of India is not only known for its rich history and vibrant culture, but also boasts a plethora of tourist attractions that can enhance visitors from far and wide. Telangana is a treasure trove of architectural marvels with historical monuments and structures that tell tales of my own era. From the majestic Charminar, a symbol of Hyderabad's heritage to the intricately carved thousand pillar